Hello and welcome to Edukimi's YouTube channel. My name is Harsh Singh and this discussion is on the featured news for 25th August 2021, which is on Montreal Protocol. In context of India ratifying the Kigali Agreement to this protocol, we will understand what is the significance of Kigali Agreement. We will understand how does it relate to Montreal Protocol, what is ozone depleting substances and how are they creating hole in the stratosphere layer and also why is this Montreal Protocol treated as the most successful treaty on earth. In the year 2016, countries around the world met at Kigali, Rwanda. Their main idea was to phase out HFC. HFC is hydrofluorocarbon. Now, HFC is not an ozone depleting substance. However, the countries met under Montreal Protocol, which is for ozone depleting substances, and they wanted to phase out HFC. There is a background to it. The background rise in the industrial revolution when refrigeration and air conditioning technologies were being used in the worldwide space. Now, to be able to cool these devices, important gases were required. These gases were chlorofluorocarbons. Although they could efficiently carry out cooling of these devices, however, scientists found out in the 1970s that these gases led to depletion in the ozone. So there was a hole in ozone created at stratosphere. Stratosphere is the layer of earth around the earth where these uh, ozone gases are present and they are very helpful for us because they prevent the incoming solar radiations, the UV radiations. These UV radiations are not good for human skin, human eyes, etc. And therefore, ozone layer is a good layer for us, right, present at the stratosphere. But these gases, CFCs, they would go up in the atmosphere, up to the layer of stratosphere and they would react here and this is how they would deplete the ozone present and therefore they caused an ozone hole and this hole was specially present in the Antarctic region and the Arctic region. Now, and uh, if these ozone layer would not be present, then this UV rays would come to the earth and especially in the temperate areas to begin with and after that the U, this hole would later expand if we keep on using CFC and therefore countries met at Vienna, Vienna in Austria in the year 1985 and they resolved that they will protect the ozone layer. They met again at Montreal in the year 1987 and this time they met with an agenda to phase out ozone depleting substances. What were they? CFC, chlorofluorocarbon. So the idea was to replace these gases with those gases which would still be used in air conditioning and refrigeration. However, they will not be ozone depleting. So let us know what is the mechanism here for ozone depletion. Now what happens is that these chlorofluorocarbons when they go up in the atmosphere they go up to the layer of stratosphere and this is where they react with ultraviolet rays because ultraviolet rays are absorbed at this layer and this is the place just above this layer, ozone layer, they react with ultraviolet rays and CFCs, they break into compounds. For example, they break into chlorine and this chlorine later reacts with the ozone present in this layer and they break down the ozone layer here, right? So they break down the ozone compound. After that, this leads to the formation of these ozone holes at stratosphere. So this is the process. Because of several amendments in the Montreal Protocol, it has become most successful global cooperation. Right now, this time we have met to phase out another gas, another gas called as HFC, hydrofluorocarbon. This hydrofluorocarbon is not an ozone depleting substance. However, it causes a humongous amount of global warming up to even 12,000, 12,000 times that of carbon dioxide. And therefore, the phasing out of HFC is also important to, to stop climate change. And therefore, uh, countries like India have now ratified this treaty, this Kigali Amendment to Montreal, uh, Montreal Protocol. There's, India has said that India will phase out as much as 85% of HFC by the year 2047. So now let me quickly take you to the article that we have covered in our Gazette magazine. Right Now, Montreal Protocol. It is on substances that deplete ozone layer and this 2016 amendment, Kigali amendment was on HFC, HFC hydrofluorocarbon. Earlier we have phased out the CFCs chlorofluorocarbon and we have also phased out HCFC hydrochlorofluorocarbons, right? Although HFC was a very good alternative, right, for ODS substances. So for ozone depleting, HFC is not the one. In fact, the use of HFC has ensured that CFC and HCFC are not used. 
and because of this we have seen that there is a lot of recuperation in the in the in the hole so this hole has reduced and by 2050 we will find that most of the hole will be recovered but this hfc since it is a global warming gas since it is a greenhouse gas therefore it needs to be phased out and india has chalked out a strategy for the same india needs the stakeholdership here so industries have to be participating and India needs a legislation here. So India has come out with a full plan of how it will phase out 85% of HFC by the year 2047. Most important thing to note about HFC is that it causes a humongous level of global warming and that is why it is being phased out right now. A quick background to Montreal Protocol, as I mentioned, it was adopted in the year 1987 and the idea was to remove all the ozone depleting substances from Earth. Montreal Protocol is regarded as one of the most successful treaties on earth. Why? Because firstly, all the United Nations members ratified this treaty. So participation of all was the most important criteria. The second is all the countries had common but differentiated responsibilities. Now this is something we have always heard. We have heard this uh, in the Paris Climate Deal as well. But this was not uh, successful, as successful as the Montreal Protocol. Why? Because there were binding and measurable targets and there were time bound targets. Why did this happen? This happened because there was an impetus from the developed countries to ensure that ODS be removed from earth, ozone depleting substances be removed from earth. And why was this impetus especially there for Montreal Protocol? It is because that this hole created by the ozone, this would affect the temperate areas more than the tropical areas to begin with. And most of the developed countries are located in temperate latitude areas only. And therefore, they tried to enforce this by giving technology by giving finances, by ensuring that trade be restricted, export on these items ODS, for example CFC be restricted and therefore effectively 98% of such substances have been removed from earth and this is how this became a very very successful treaty. Also one important reason for its success is because it is an evolving treaty. So as we saw Vienna Convention, we also saw Montreal Protocol, we, we, we will see a number of uh, meetings by these countries, by these parties and after that we also have a Kigali amendment as well. So this is an evolving treaty and that is why it led to the success of Montreal Protocol. It has led to the phasing out of 98% of ODS. It has also participated in redu reducing global warming. Why? Because now HFC which is being removed, it is a global warming gas, right? It has also prevented a lot of health disasters, especially related to skin cancer. Now, it is also contributing to sustainable development goals. Why? Because it is creating jobs, new jobs in these environment friendly mechanisms. Here is a quick background to how this treaty evolved. After Vienna Convention, we had Montreal Protocol on ODS and then we started to schedule the emission, how much emission to be reduced and later we had HCFC, hydrochlorofluorocarbon participant and then we had also HFC reduction introduced in developing countries and later we also had this Kigali Agreement. After having understood the timeline of this Kigali Agreement and how it evolved with time, I would like you to take 30 seconds to think on the whole agreement, how it co continued, what were the important reasons for its success because this is a success story and after that quickly answer this question. What is the Montreal Protocol? How far has it been successful in achieving its targets and the reasons behind the success? If you like this video, share some love on us through likes, shares, comments. If you subscribe to this channel, you will receive timely updates. Thanks for watching.